Okay, welcome to your um, first of two sessions of ethics and etiquette. This is the last class for the 1920 or 2020, 2019, 2020 school year. Um, if you want college credit for this course, you go to churchoftheheartland.com or Coth TV. You will take your test and um, pay your fee. And if you are not here for the college credit, then just hope you enjoy this. I hope it sinks in. So I'm super excited for you guys that are graduating this year. Um, super proud of you. Please let Pastor Misty know by May 26th where you would like your diploma, at which location, or if she needs to send it to you. Um, and that is on the uh, Growth Track Facebook page. So let her know by the 26th. So um, let's just open a prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this wonderful school year, Lord. I just thank you for every student that is poured into you, Lord, that they are seeking your face. I just ask that you continue to bless them through the summer. I pray that the ones that um, have not finished with the fourth year, that they come back next year, Lord. I just pray that everything that we've learned, we apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we all said, amen. All right, so this class, we're going to be discussing how we as Christians need to act and behave. Um, we also will be looking into the Bible and what God says about our conduct, what it should look like. You know, the world says it's okay to do a, lo a lot of different things, but we as Christians, um, we are to be sanctified. Sanctified means that we are separated. Then now that doesn't mean that we're better than anyone else. It just means that we live differently and we look at things through God's eyes, not the world's eyes. And we look at um, what the, the word of the Bible tells us. So um, I know that some things that I'm going to be talking about tonight are, seem really super simple, and it's not to insult anyone, but I think that if we take an honest look at our lives of what we go out over today, that um, we are going to see that there's things that we need to do. And when we say when we're walking with Jesus, walking is an action. It's a verb. It's something that we do. So it's not just like we know Jesus, we sit still, um, we need to walk with him. So I know for me, um, just doing this research and stuff, there was a bunch of things that hit my heart like, oh, I need to work on that, even though it seems super simple. But so we're going to start with this first session about etiquette. Now, the meaning of etiquette is the customary code of polite behavior in society or among members of a particular profession or group. And I'll repeat that. Etiquette is the customary code of polite behavior in society or among members of a particular profession or group. Now, when I first saw that um, definition, it kind of bothered me because it says a customary code. And our customs over the years have changed dramatically. What was allowed... 30 years ago or was was not accepted is accepted what wasn't accepted is accepted now so we don't really want to go according to the customs of the world we want to take a look at what um, Jesus says and God says about the way that we should live so um, you know God has laid out for us the etiquettes that we're to live by and so we're going to take a look at some scripture first we're going to just take a look at the seven basic rules of etiquette um, like I said, this all sounds super simple, but I think we can find something to work on. Number one, play, uh, say please and thank you. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, sometimes we just forget like what people do for us, what sacrifices they make for us, and we just need to be gracious people. We don't need to be people that are expecting things from other people. And when someone does go out of their way for you, you just say thank you. My um, sister has raised my niece and nephew in their classes, when they leave class, every teacher, they say thank you. And it may not seem like a lot, but those teachers remember those kids. And it means a lot to people. They pour in every day to those kids, and those kids walk out and say thank you. So that's just something to remember. Number two, give genuine compliments. You know, we should not be saying to people things that we really don't truly mean just to get someone to like us or rub elbows or anything like that. Um, let's just be truthful with our compliments about people. I do have a friend that I know, and she tells everyone like how beautiful they are and how gorgeous they are and how lovely they are. And then when they leave, they're not. And so, you know, when she says it to me, it's like, 
oh, I'm not really truly believing that. So it's hard to believe that. So when you do give someone a compliment, just make sure that you truly mean it. Number three, don't be boastful, arrogant, or loud. Boastful, arrogant, or loud. These are all products of pride. And, you know, aren't we turned off about, you know, with people that are arrogant or loud? You know, sometimes I'm super loud and I annoy myself. So um, we just, we know that there's those certain people that annoy us and um, we just don't want to be those type of people. Number four, we listen before speaking. Um, We try not to be the person that interrupts someone or speaks over someone. Now, this is not a biblical thought, but um, I had a friend that said, God gave you two ears and one mouth. Um, Better to hear, you know, to hear more than you speak. And I don't know if that's what God designed our ears and mouth for, but um, it does make kind of sense. So we just listen more than we're going to speak. Number five, speak with kindness and caution. You know, it's super important to think before we say something. You know, our words can damage people. And I'm sure there's someone in your life that you're thinking about right now that said something, whether you're little or even as you're older, that, that hurts. Or, or you have those people that gave you a compliment and you remember those things. So if it's not true, helpful, important, and necessary, and mostly kind, you probably don't need to say it. So before you say something true, helpful, important, necessary, and kind. Number six, do not criticize or complain. You know, sometimes that's super hard to do, um, but those are etiquettes. I was a driver examiner for the license branch for years, and my job was to criticize. And I will tell you that's the easiest job in the world because you can always find flaws in somebody. So we just need to be careful about that. Number seven, be punctual. When you um, don't show up on time, you're telling someone that your time is more important than someone else's when you make them wait. So that's, that's rude. I have a friend, literally, you have to tell him a half hour and he's still late. Like if you're meeting at 5.30, you tell him 5, and he still shows up at 5.45, and it gets super annoying. You know, you're like, "Uh, we know he's going to be late, but so um, for those of you that enrolled in growth traffic at the beginning of the year, I know Pastor Misty went over the code of conduct that you guys needed to sign, Um, but I just wanted to go over those again. You guys are coming into summer, and um, sometimes we forget about those things, and we just kind of want those to be our, our nature of who we are. Um, you know, I've heard people say, well, I'm not in school anymore, so I can drink, I can watch these R-rated movies. Yeah, you can, but, um, you know, it kind of should hurt our hearts. So I'm just going to go over them really quickly. Um, there's 10 of them. Number one, I've accepted Jesus as my personal save- Savior. Now, if there's anyone online or anyone here, I don't think so, but if there's anyone here that hasn't accepted Jesus, you know, reach out to someone, have them pray with you, um, because that is our goal in life, is to have that uh, relationship with him. Number two, I will commit to being very faithful in my church attendance. The Bible tells us to meet with each other. Um, I know it's super weird now because of this disease, but, um, you know, that's what we're to do. Number three, I will refrain from tobacco use. Um, I will have to say that there's someone I know, and it's super cool. She won't sign the code of conduct because she smokes, and, you know, I just pray for her that that um, addiction leaves her, but it's super cool that she has enough in her, enough um, integrity that she won't sign that prior. Um, Four, I will refrain from alcohol, illegal, or or other habit-forming drugs. Number five, I will refrain from watching R-rated movies and other things that will affect my walk with Christ. Um, you know, sometimes there's maybe a movie out there that's rated R and it's not necessarily smut. You know, you could ask a pastor or something. I know Glenn and I have done that. Pastor Heath, what about this movie? Like Passion of the Christ is rated R. That doesn't mean that we necessarily can't watch it. So we just want to be accountable to someone and run it past someone else. Um, let's see, number seven. No, I'm sorry, number six. I will conduct myself with sexual purity, refrain, refrain from pornography, premarital sex, homosexuality, etc. You know, if you are having problems in this area, listen, the devil loves to attack in this area, and it's, you don't have to be ashamed of anything. 
Um, but you may be struggling. Reach out to somebody. Let them pray over your life, over that situation. And number seven, I will commit to being a student of the word of God and a, and a personal prayer and a person of prayer. Um, that's what you guys are doing. Just continue it. It's awesome. Number eight, I realize that my life is seen by others and I will live in a way that does not cause them to question. It's to live above a reproach. And, you know, people are watching, especially you're in Bible college. People don't understand why you would waste your time. They're watching you to see if you will stumble. The world doesn't understand. So we just want to make sure that we don't put ourselves in a situation that someone can question where we're coming from, our ethics. And so number nine um, is I will refrain from criticism, gossip, and cursing. Um, it's been told to me, like, if you curse immediately just say you're sorry because people don't like to say they're sorry it's like oh, i'm a christian i shouldn't have said that i'm sorry and you will you will catch yourself next time because you don't want to say that and number 10 i will demonstrate knowledge of sound doctrine and that's what you guys are working on right now so um, the next point we want to be accountable to someone um, if you don't have a mentor you know pre please pray about it think about someone that you can trust and um, go to them, ask them if they'll be your mentor. And I would just say one thing about that, is like especially with etiquette, if you have a mentor, don't expect that mentor to come to you to see how your walk is, your godly walk. You need to check in with them. That's your job to, to check in. Um, see, set up something with them, whether you guys wanna meet once a week, for lunch, whatever it is. Um, even right now, it's weird, maybe a Facebook, video or messenger or something like that so yeah just i know it's it's uh it's important to have someone to be accountable to in your walk with christ all right so one of the biggest things with etiquette is just showing respect to each other so um i want you to on the side of your paper it's called an acrostic which i never knew that word before but it's r-e-s-p-e-c-t like aretha franklin yeah and um so we're each letter we're going to go through what that means in the aspect of respect so the r is rule and it's the golden rule and we're going to go over some scripture with each one it's matthew 7 12 it says so in everything do to others what you would have them do for you this sums up the law and the prophets I mean, that is just what we do. If you want to be a friend, or if you want to have a friend, you need to be a friend. You want love, you got to show love. Um, it's just what, I mean, that's, this is all biblical stuff. It's nothing that Church of the Heartland is making up. Um, so these are the ethics that God has laid out for us. The E is esteem, and it's from Philippians 2, 3. And it says, do, not, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. You know, the world is polar opposite of the scripture. Um, the world says, take care of yourself first, put you first. Um, and I will tell you my least favorite pet peeve thing that I hear, especially of parents that have raised kids for years, they might have had five kids, and by year 25, they're tired, um, is that it's time for me. It's not time for you until your children are grown. And uh, we just want to do things for us because we're tired of what we chose. So um, that is that selfish ambition. So um, that is E. For S, it's submission to authority. Submission to authority. In 1 Peter 5.5, 5, it says, In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. Now, this isn't um, exactly talking about age. It's just talking about our spiritual walk. You know, for example, Pastor Heath is younger than a lot of us in here, but we, if we are in Church of the Heartland, we are under his authority for Church of the Heartland, and we need to respect him as an elder of the church, not because he's older, you know. So um, the P is prefer love. It's from Romans 12, 10, and it says, love each other with genuine affection. That's the brotherly type of love and take delight in honoring each other. You know, sometimes it's super hard to love people. We talk about it all the time, but, um, you know, we just have to be honest with God. Go to him and say, Lord, I am just struggling to love this person. You know, and sometimes, like this says, um, we just got to love them. Like, like Nike says, just do it. We just have to do it, even though we don't know how. 
uh, God gives us a way, but we have to be honest in our approach to God. Like, I can't, I don't know, Lord, give me, give me the way to do it. And um, also, I want to say something that Pastor Herb taught me in Bible college is like, we as, um, well, a nation, a country, as Christians, we have to stop being offended by things. That is the big word. It's, aff- I'm offended. Everything offends everybody. And mostly it's like you're angry. And what he explained, it took a while to sink in. It may take a while for you guys. But um, when we walk around saying we're offended, we actually are walking around telling people we're sinning. And that didn't make sense at first to me, but it's like, if I'm offended, it means I'm angry about something you said to me. And instead of going to you and getting it worked out, talking it honestly with each other, I hold on to that offense. I hold on to that anger. And now I'm telling you I'm offended because so-and-so did whatever. I'm telling you I'm walking around in anger, in sin. So it's something that we just need. To, and that's always stuck with me. It's like, that's a good way to look at it. If I want to be offended, I've got to fix the situation first godly and um, he'll take care of it. All right. So E is etiquette and it is rules governing cor- uh, correct behavior. And that's what we talked about in the beginning. It's from Colossians 4, 5, and 6. It says, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your converse be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. And there again, the world is watching us. You know, they're waiting. Um, they're waiting. The enemy is waiting to call us out and he will use any avenue. So um, we just want to make sure that we're, we're those things where our conversations are gracious and attractive and that we have the right response to everyone. If someone attacks us, we don't attack them back. Um, that is C. We have C is courtesy and polite behavior. It's out of 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9. It says, finally, all of you should be of one mind. Um, sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a, a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessings. And there again, sometimes that is just super hard. If someone attacks you verbally, physically, like you want to just fight back, but he is telling us here not to do that. But the cool thing is at the end of this scripture, what it says is here, this is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. When we do what he tells us to do, it doesn't matter what someone else did to it, to us. He is going to grant us this blessing. And you know what? Who doesn't want that? I'm going to sign up for that. So in order to get that, I got to do that other part too. All right. So the last uh, letter is teach. It says to give knowledge and skill. In 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, it says, You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Those trustworthy people are you guys right here in this room online. That's who we're, this is what um, Paul was telling Timothy. We have to pass it on. It doesn't just stop here. Um, you guys are the next, you're the leaders already. Like I know some of you are super leaders anyways, but it's next generations, next generations. Um, you know, the Bible tells us not to throw our pearls to swine. And when we give out scripture like this, those are pearls. Those are beautiful words. And if we throw it to someone and we're teaching that to someone who doesn't want it or can't understand it, literally he's eating it and he's pooping it, you know, and we don't want to be those people. You guys are not those people. So these words that go into you, they're beautiful. And then you spread it to other people, you know, just like this COVID-19, let us be like a spread of the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that's what we're called to do. So, um, you know, the things that you guys have learned over the last year, or I don't know how many years you've been in Bible college, you know, share those truths with people, you know, find ways to bring up a conversation. You know, we don't want to be those Bible thumpers that are just just giving um, scripture to someone, you know, that's weird. The world doesn't like that. But, you know, you each have, if you're enrolled, you each have a paper that you have to write for the end of the year. Um, 
I know one year in Bible college, we had to write a sermon, and then we had to share that sermon with two people. So the same thing with these papers at the end of the year. Maybe some family or friend that is not a believer say, hey, I had to write this paper. Can I read it to you so you can you know, evaluate it for me or help me, tell me what you think about it? It's a way to get that into someone's life um, without, you know, you're, you're planting seeds, but you're not thumping them on the head and telling them how horrible they are. So we just got to come up with ways to do that. Another way to share what th- and keep things fresh in our mind and share things is um, when you walk out of class or on Sundays when you leave a sermon, if you have a spouse in the car, ask them, what did you get out of today's sermon? What happened today? You know, what, it, what struck you? If, it, if you don't have a spouse, um, call up a friend that you sat in church with or you guys go to lunch and just discuss, see what happens. Because when, when you just hear it and that stops, sometimes it just stops there. Um, that's why it's important to take notes. Like that's important. The word the, in your ear is important. The words writing down is important. It helps you remember. But when you speak it and you have a conversation, you're more likely to remember it. Because sometimes like if I asked you what your sermon was last week, last Sunday, which was only just a few days ago, you might really question it. But if you talked about it, you're going to be able to remember that more. And also, um, if you have kids in church too, ask them when they get in the car immediately because, you know, kids are kids. But say, hey, so what did you learn today? And I guarantee you they're going to say they don't know because they probably don't know. But ask the, the teacher, the um, Sunday school teacher, what they talked about, whether it was Noah or about being kind to each other, whatever the subject was. And then have that conversation with them and say, well, did you talk about Noah? Yeah, okay. And then each day even so that they remember too because we have to teach these kids 20 minutes in Sunday school for them is just not enough for for their lives. You know, they're out there fighting this battle just like the rest of us. All right, so growth track is not just about gaining knowledge in your head, taking tests, spending money, spending time. It's that you can grow and learn so that you can turn around and help someone else grow and learn. That's what um, this is all about. It's not just for yourselves. All right, so this should not just stop with the notes on your paper or the information in your head. You know, truly be 2 Timothy 2.2, and that is super easy to remember. Remember that scripture, 2 Timothy 2.2. Pass your knowledge on to someone else. All right, so we're going to take a break, and then we'll come back, and then we're going to talk about um, ethics.